สวัสดีครับ Good evening and welcome to Thai PBS English News Service. I'm Super John Clint Swan. A special cabinet meeting today approved a 20 billion baht budget for post-flood projects. This amount is targeted to be spent within the next 45 days. The prime minister, however, states that budget allocation will be entirely transparent and above board, as well as worth the taxpayers' money. After a special cabinet meeting today, Prime Minister Ying Lakshinawat told the media that all budget spending for post-flood projects is vital and will not duplicate money spent via other related projects and will be distributed to the public and public works effectively and transparently. The total post-flood rehabilitation and restoration budget for the entire nation was set at 120 billion baht. The transport and industry ministries were expected to be awarded the biggest cut. Of that figure, the cabinet early approved around 60 billion baht, but the PM has asked for 47 billion to be held back for now and reconsidered in February next year. Today's approval of 20.11 billion baht goes to projects under three main categories. The biggest chunk, which is around 13 billion baht, will be to the flood compensation payment of 5,000 baht to be given to 2.6 million families in flood-affected provinces. The second chunk, around 1.5 billion, goes to developing the quality of life or social infrastructure. This covers rebuilding schools, hospitals, and compensations of workers laid off by the floods. The last chunk, around 3 billion baht, is devoted to restoring infrastructure devastated by the floods, including highways, local roads, and historical sites. This budget covers projects which will require funding in this week through the end of January next year. And apart from that, Prime Minister Ying Lakshinawat says a cabinet reshuffle will not be likely until the first few months at least, uh, will not be likely, excuse me, for the first few months of 2012. And now moving on, the Bangkok governor insists that Bangkok will be totally dry of flood water before the start of 2012, despite the fact that there are still nine districts which have areas that are still underwater. The nine districts include three districts to the west, Tuiwatana, Nong Kham, and Bang Kha districts, and six to the north and east of Bangkok, namely Don Mueang, Sai Mai, Bang Khen, Kanayao, Klong Samwa, and Minburi. Areas in the west are seeing positive signs of improvement as canal levels were down a further four to eight centimeters over the weekend. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration is seeking assistance from Nakhon Batom province to offer access to low plains where the BMA can divert water. The water level at the Japriya River is also 7 centimeters lower than last week. Mom Rajapong Sukhum Hanboripat told the media the BMA continues to install more water pumps in flooded areas. The Bangkok governor insists all areas in Bangkok will be dry before the end of the year, which is just 19 days from now. Nakhon Sawan province, which was hit by the floods over four months ago, is slowly recovering and local officials are aiming to bring back locals, excuse me, bringing, bringing back tourists as their first priority. After the flood, the crocodile farm at Bung Pet is seeing an increasing number of visitors, which locals say is a good sign. However, the number of visitors is still only half the number of this period last year. 83,000 households and 600,000 rai, or 96,000 hectares of farmland in 10 districts of Nakhon Sawan, were underwater when the province was hit by the floods. So far, around 300 million baht has been assigned to rebuild roads and tourist sites. The famous Bung Pet Lake is expected to be ready to welcome tourists again by December the 15th. The BMA, together with the public and private sectors, have today initiated a systematic approach towards waste management, which academics claim will be able to reduce the amount of garbage carried to dump sites by about 60 percent and also create value from everyday garbage. Following Thailand's worst flood in living memory, the amount of garbage thrown out by flood victims increased at a dramatic rate. Figures from Bangkok Metropolitan Administration show Bangkok residents who normally throw out an average of 8,500 tons of garbage per day are now trashing out more than 20 times that amount, a big portion of which is water-damaged furniture. Uncollected garbage lying on the streets, 
sidewalks, and public property waiting for the BMA to dispose of is estimated to be around 46 billion tons. Following a week-long ad hoc project in p a s i j a r e n District, which announced that it welcomes all sorts of post-flood leftovers, especially furniture, huge amounts of garbage flooded in. Volunteers at the site separate the garbage into categories. Some will be sold for cash. Some will be turned into manure, or, like the 20 tons of wood collected from thrown-out furniture, will be used as fuel. Organizers of this scheme say everything starts at home, and the massive floods have ignited a public awareness across Thai society about taking a more active role in waste management. But the Bangkok governor believes the move came in too late. Uh, so uh, separation is the key, uh, but uh, post separation uh, management is also very important, and uh, the. Uh, The initiative today is a very good one because uh, after separation, uh, if uh, cert, if parts or the majority of the solid waste can be recycled uh, into something uh, useful, that, that's even better because it will put us less pressure on the need to uh, uh, for landfills. So you're saying this scheme will not be ad hoc, but it will continue. It, it's uh, I, I think uh, it is too late to use this model to res- to. Uh, resolve the problem this year entirely, but it, it serves as a very good model for the future. Right. Uh, 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 a model of how to address the solid waste management problem. The technology and know-how from the SCG Foundation and the Thai Health Promotion Foundation resulted in a systematic approach towards waste management, which can reduce the amount of garbage carried to dump sites by up to 60 percent, and cut down the time used in collection by five-fold. The BMA and its alliance expect to clear out the post-flood garbage across Bangkok before the year's end. IT experts are suggesting computer owners whose computer fell victim to the floods not to try to dry it up themselves. Professional help will result in a higher chance of successfully retrieving data from the hard drives. p y r o t i a m a n g o n p a n MD of Interdata Recovery, told Thai PBS that in order to retrieve information held on the hard drive of your flooded computer, one must start by not turning the computer on. Instead, the hard disk or even the entire case should be sent to computer experts with special equipment to drain out water and recover valuable data. Drying up or draining out yourselves could result in damaging the delicate and essential small mechanical parts inside the hard disk. The water's pH level or acidity alkaline level could possibly damage the hard disk for good and render the data irretrievable. s i r i d e t Bun Sang of k e m u n g k u t s Institute of Technology, l a i k r a b a n g says, however, that drowned hard disks have a higher chance of being retrieved when compared to dropping a hard disk onto the floor. According to the National Electronics and Computer Technology Center, or NECTEC, Thailand was the world's number two supplier of hard disks. But after the massive floods hit 260 computer hardware factories in Ayutthaya. The deputy director of NECTEC could not say if Thailand will be able to hold on to its ranking. Many of us experienced the rocketing price of sandbags during the pre-flood period. However, the precious bags are now no more no, are now uh, no more higher value than common garbage. However, to many temples around Thailand, sand is welcome as always. His venerable p r a k u n i b i t s a t u w a t abbot of Chao Am Temple in Bang Khun Non District, told Thai PBS that Chao Am Temple welcomes sandbags more than ever. The temple is now building a five-story meditation center on a plot of land, which need to be filled and leveled. This is why the temple is all arms and welcoming sand. If the temple had to buy sand and hire trucks to fill this piece of land. The budget required would be over 5 million baht. Tens of thousands of sandbags from locals in Bang Khun Non and nearby Bang Phat districts have been donated to this temple already, but much more is needed. The BMA has set up 75 sites across Bangkok where people can dump their used sandbags. Officials are worried that 
if the massive amounts of sand are left on the streets or not taken care of. There are chances of sand clogging up sewers. Sandbags were sold up to 60 baht a unit during the pre-flood period. When supply did not meet demand, compared to normal times, when a bag of sand the same size would typically cost less than 10 baht. The abbot of Zhao Am Temple reminded Thai PBS of an ancient ritual. Still practiced today, Thais refer to these traditions as Khonsai Khawat, or literally translated bringing sand to temples, as an effort to help construct buildings within the monastery, which Thais believe is making merit. After talking to a few garbage collectors, I found out that uh, their income uh, has increased about two or three times. However, some of the items that they find in the garbage sites that they will not put into their carts to be sold is actually sandbags. And now it's time for the decoding time of the worst flood in 2000, and, uh, the worst flood in uh, 50 years. And now here's Kundarin Kong Akara and Jan Seri Suparathit. So, yes. uh, what have we got today? Uh, today we got uh, the lesson about evacuation zone that we have a lot of problem because we have to relocate again and again all of this flood time. Okay, yes. Dr. Seri, why yes. we have to relocate for the evacuation point again and again in many um, provinces? Yeah, I think the first uh, uh, major problem is that uh, we have no uh, decision support system mm -hmm. for the flood behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you do do the flood assessment mm -hmm. by using this supporting system, and you will know that where should be evacuate the people to, mm -hmm. uh, it should be in uh, easily communicate. Yeah, and also you can go easily and to send uh, many things, food supply and medical issue, mm -hmm. uh, for etc. Yeah. Okay, so let's see the pictures that okay. you, you will show us what is about, about yeah. the evacuation places. Okay. Just like in Bangkok. Yes. In Bangkok, uh, they have a lot of problem also. Yeah. Uh, both Bangkok and Frog come to you and talk to you about yeah. the point of the evacuation center for, yeah, for yeah, this time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time, I, I think that they, they come to they, they came to see me and then yes. to ask me that where should be the suitable buildings yeah, for evacuation. Yes. So I told them that uh, the point that uh, the flood depth should not be more than 50 centimeters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because of if the flood depth is more than 50 centimeters, it is really hard to enter. It's really hard to communicate. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to use a like a pick up mm -hmm. uh, when it's really difficult to to, to go. Mm -hmm. So I recommend them to to many places mm -hmm. uh, with the flood depth about 20 to 30 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, now we have problem about the picture. So yeah. I I see an, an examples about the evacuation center in Batum Thani also. Yes. There is a lot of um, the the Batum Thani province is flooded for 100 yes. percent. So how about the evacuation center in Batum Thani for this time? Yeah, yeah, because uh, we, we have made the simulation already and we told them already that it is not, uh, it is not suitable mm -hmm. to uh, set up an evacuation point in Patum Thani because it's flood 100 percent with the flood depth 2 to 3 meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very difficult. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we have to relocation again yeah, and again, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, especially mm -hmm. for the Thammasat University. Yes, you see? we yeah. have a very high flood yeah. there. Yeah, okay. yeah, yes. Okay. So thank you very much, Dr. Seri. Yeah, so okay. tomorrow we will have more lesson to show us uh, what is about um, the ideas of the foreign expert that's come to see Dr. Seri for many nations for all of this time. Right, so yeah. gathering foreign expertise. Yes. Okay, okay. thank you, Kunarin, and thank you, Professor yeah. Seri. And I do apologize for the delay of the graphics. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS English News Service. I'm Super John Quinswan. Thank you so much for watching us tonight. Sawadee